Okay, here is our last lesson in chapter three, which is on proving and ruling our journals. <clears throat> so we're going to talk about what proving and ruling is. We're going to talk about um, how to prove cash and why we do that. And then also talk about how you may need to identify and then correct errors um, using the appropriate accounting practices. So let's first talk about proving and ruling a journal page. So um, it's a little bit different when you are in MindTap versus when you're going to be doing your workbook problem. And I just want to stress that because MindTap is great for a lot of things, but it does do some of the standard practices that you will need to do when you do a workbook. Um, I will say that um, accounting still in businesses today some is done electronically. I will say a lot is done electronically, but there are still some small sole proprietorships, one owned, um, one person managed businesses that do keep actual paper accounting records. So it is super important that you know how to do both. Um, when you are in college, depending on where you go, you might have um, uh, your accounting done online like a mind tap, or you might have some paper copies. Um, We've talked to, um, as accounting teachers, we've talked to um, different accounting college professors. And even in the area here versus NDSU versus Concordia versus MSUM versus UND, um, there's about, uh, about half of them use paper and half of them use online. So it is important that we know how to do both. So back to proving and ruling. Um, when we get to the last line of your journal page, so you don't want to fill your last line with a transaction. You want to leave that blank because what we do is we prove and rule our columns. So we always do this before totals are carried forward to the next page. The reason we want to do that is, is because if we have an error, we don't want to carry forward our totals to the next page and then still have an error. So when you get to the end of a journal page, we always prove, meaning when I say prove, I'm saying we're going to check to make sure that our debits equal our credits. If they do, then we rule our page. And when we rule, what ruling means is we're saying, yes, our debits equal our credits. So let's take a look at what that looks like here. Um, so both MindTap and um, your workbook problems will give you this handy dandy little sheet. Um, for the most part, I would hope that you would understand this. We've got our general debit column total, our general credit column total, sales has a credit, and cash has both a debit and a credit. So all we do is we put in our totals for those columns, and then we add them up and make sure they equal. If they equal, like you see we have the 9,153, if they both equal, then that means that we can rule our journal page and bring those totals forward to our next page and keep going with our transactions. So this is what it looks like. Um, and it will look virtually the same in both MindTap and on your workbook. But whatever your very last day was um, that, you trans, that you had a transaction on, you can see the 23rd, we put the 23rd down as our date to carry forward. Um, notice here, and it's hard to see, but there is a solid line right here. Um, MindTap will do this for you. Um, your workbook obviously won't. So we single rule right here, and note that it says a single rule indicates that our columns are going to be totaled. So anytime you see a single rule on your journal page, you're like, oh, they're going to total. That's what that means. So here's your single rule. Then what we do is, like I said, we put the date and we write the words carried forward in there. Um, typically, we will also put a check mark here in our post reference column. I know we haven't got to post reference yet. That's in chapter four. Um, I'm not going to be super um, stringent on if you don't do this right now, just because you don't know what post-reference means. If you want to stick it in there, go ahead, but it's not the end of the world if you forget it in this chapter. Um, and then all we do is we total. So we total up everything, total up everything, total, 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 and we write each column total beneath that single line. Okay. Then again, we want to make sure that it is proved, meaning what we just did on that following page, that 9,123. And if our debits equal our credits, then we put a double line underneath here. And can you see that 
on the screen, you double line that. Double lines mean that your debits equal your credits, okay? So, as I said, MindTap will do the single line and the double line for you. You will need to fill in this row. On your workbook, you will need to put the single line and the double line. Typically, when we do this as accountants, we use a red pen because red is nice and bright and it's easy for us to see. Um, so I encourage you to use a red pen. Um, I do have some up at the front of the classroom. Feel free to use those. Um, it just it makes it nice and easy to see. Um, please make sure, though, that you don't run all over the place with this. They should be neat. Um, I have rulers up at the front, too. You shouldn't have massive spaces between your single lines and your double lines. If it looks really messy, um, you will lose some points for that because remember, part of being an accountant is being neat and accurate. Okay, so then we're not done yet. You can see January has how many days? Anybody, anybody? January has 31 days. Um, so you need to keep going with your month. So that's why we start a new journal page. We stay on that same date that we had before, which is the 23rd. Um, and instead, we're going to write the words brought forward instead of carried forward. So carried forward is when obviously you're bringing them forward and then brought forward means that you brought them forward. Again, same thing. There's going to be a post-reference check, check mark here, but if you don't put that, um, I'm not going to get super uppity about it this time. And then we just bring our totals um, forward that we had at the end of that journal page. And then you're ready to continue on with the rest of your transactions. So that's called proving and ruling. You do it at the end of a journal page. Um, and then you bring them forward and you continue on with your transactions. Now, when we get to the end of the month, regardless of where you're at, if you aren't at the end of a journal page, that's okay. Um, you, it could be in the middle of a journal page, that's fine. However, at the end of every month, you always, always, always prove and rule. And the rules are the same. So we do a single line indicating that we are going to total our columns. Instead of saying carry forward or brought forward or whatever, um, we just write the word totals. Now, the totals will always be on the last day of the month, so you do need to remember how many days are in each month. Now, if you have a sing-songy song that you can remember, um, 30 days, half September, April, June, and November, you can use that. Um, you can use the trick of using your knuckles. Um, obviously, the only thing that you need to remember is that February is going to have 28 or 29 days. Um, there isn't really... I don't have a tip for remembering that, but however you need to remember, you need to remember how many days are in each month. Um, and so then, like I said, we write totals and we total up all of our columns, making sure that you do include your brought forward amount. If you forget your brought forward amount, these totals are going to be super skewed and you're all going to be off and that's not going to be good. Um, so you total using your brought forward totals at the top and then any extra transactions that you had, and then we put those in there. Again, we need to verify that our debits equal our credits. So you would take your general debit and your cash debit and compare those to your general credit, sales credit, and cash credit. If they equal, then you can go ahead and put your double underline underneath there, which again means that we have um, debits equaling credits. And so they're just showing you that here. Okay, so when we talk about proving cash, the whole point of proving cash um, is a way for us to do this without actually having our checkbook register right in front of us. So all we're trying to do is determine that the amount of cash agrees with our accounting records. Um, and so what that looks like is in order to calculate your cash balance, you take your cash on hand at the beginning of the month. Now remember, this is our first month that we were in operation as our Delgado Web Services, so we had no cash on hand at the beginning of the month. And then we take our total cash that was received during the month. Now where would that total come from? Anybody, anybody? I'm gonna go back a couple slides just to show you. Here is your cash debit column. Remember that cash debit, if you remember, is all your money coming in. Cash credit is gonna be all your money going out. So you're looking at your cash column 
when you're going about proving cash, okay? So that's where that 7,120 comes from. That's your cash debit. So that gives us a total of 7,120. Then we need to take out our cash paid during the month. Again, that's our cash credit. So we subtract out $4,523. When we do that, we get a cash balance at the end of the month of $2,597. Typically what will, it will say is that it, you wanna make sure it is the same as the next unused check stub, which it says our next unused check, to, check stub is $2,597. So you proved cash. That's how you prove it. It's very simple. You just need to know your beginning cash balance, how much you received during the month, which is your cash debit, how much you paid during the month, which is your cash credit, and then verify that that equals your next unused check stub. Now, if you make an error, this isn't necessarily going to um, work if you're working in MindTap. However, if you are going to be working in your workbook, um, this is the way that you would technically correct errors because if you remember, a journal is a permanent record. So that means technically, if you were doing this, you'd be doing it in pen. So you couldn't just erase with pencil. So you can see here what happens is that if you record an error, in order to cancel it, what we do is we simply draw a line through it. So you can see up here, we meant it to be 4,500 and it got written as 450. So we don't erase, we draw a line through it and then correct it. Um, if an entire entry was supposed to be incorrect, um, all we do is again, neatly draw lines through it, and that to us would mean that that transaction should be canceled, okay? And then you can put the correct one in right underneath it. Um, sometimes you could have several entries that are wrong, um, and that's fine, just again, if you, miswrote an account title, again, draw a line through it and write the correct one on the top. Okay, so that's how you correct errors. You never want to erase. Um, you would want to draw a line through it and then correct your entry. So that brings us to the end of our 3-4 lesson. So we're going to head over and do our 3-4 work together in MindTap. And then, of course, you have a couple of uh, other assignments to complete as well.